turn the night shot off. Yes. Because. Yeah, here. All right, all right, all right. Blooms. Check in this. Oh. Night shot. Oh no, this this was off actually. Yeah, you off? Yeah, we on the road. You are, <clears throat> we are, we are on the road. We are in the car doing the self documentary. This is Boogie Down Berlin. My name is Tom Mack. Ooh, ooh. And we on the road somewhere in Bayern, in Germany, on an autobahn. And I love, I love uh, what I love about Bayern is the autobahn, because that's pretty much the only thing. Other than for the autobahn, it's not so nice here. The police is very, very rude in Bayern. Every time they be pull, pulling people off and like really, really fucking with people like all the time. So whenever you come to Bayern, you have to be really, really careful. Don't carry nothing with you that you're not supposed to carry with you. Never drink and drive, of course. This is very dangerous. And you don't want to fuck with the police in Bayern because they'll put your ass in jail and confiscate your car like they did with mine. Actually, the police in Bayern has confiscated my car once, although there was not supposed to be. I am about to go to court uh, soon for that because then I cursed them out on Twitter and they want me to pay like 30,000 euro for cursing out the police on Twitter. So we go into court! What? I mean, come on man, they was not supposed to take my car. I didn't like drink or use or whatever and they still took my car because my friend was driving it who is supposed to drive because he was actually the driver. So um, the rental contract says, okay, he's supposed to drive and the police didn't want to didn't wanna accept it. So they took our car. We had to go home on train. Horrible, horrible. But anyway, we had a great show yesterday in, uh, in Pio, Pio Hallstatt. This is one of the most beautiful places in Germany. It's a big, nice club. Um, like it holds like 1500 people or whatever. It's like one of the big like big um, R&B clubs on a Friday night. They have beautiful Beautiful crowd in there a lot of pretty girls beautiful looking women good fellas also There was partying and we was there yesterday and we had a ball. It was beautiful We was enjoying it and I'm kind of like a resident there. That's pretty much like the only club in Germany that I would do resident shows. Last year I was there like eight weeks or nine weeks in a row. I was enjoying it very much because whenever, as a DJ, whenever a resident at a club, it makes the possibility of getting a relationship to your audience. You would like a real relationship because you will see your audience like nine weeks. I would see my audience nine weeks um, in a row. So um, so that was really beautiful. I was enjoying it, playing a lot of like reggae stuff and playing a lot of exclusive stuff and getting like a real fan base in a club. I love it. That being a resident DJ is pretty much one of the best jobs you can have as a DJ because every week you would see the same people you can you can you can play for the same people every week so you can you can build up a relationship to them and you can um, get true fans and true following one of the guys um, two years ago actually asked me for a track that I did once with Coolio this track's name is girls Ooh, I like girls and this this guy kind of grew up um, on, on my music and he showed a lot of respect and now um, he's my opening DJ, so you know that's really also a very positive side of the of the of the DJ life. You know, inspire young DJs, inspire people. Yesterday, the the guy was opening, and I was very happy to see him. I was very happy he was doing his thing. He was um, he was he was killing it. He was he was he was doing a, a nice nice warm up, nice opening and, and yeah and, and and it's always good when when the DJ when you get a lot of love for, from 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 other DJs I think this is a nice nice important part because they 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 when when other DJs shows you respect that that really means something. I mean of course rocking the crowd is like the most pretty much you know the, the thing that is about but also inspiring other DJs is a it's a very good thing and and a lot of DJs said yeah I was inspired by you and, and your music and stuff so big shout out to all my DJs out there doing your thing 
and yeah um, if I have contributed something to you being a DJ thank you for that thank you for being a DJ keep on doing your thing I know it's not easy you have to like work all night and and do you know kind of people be coming and asking you strange music requests sometimes or whatever hey but at the end of the day it's all about your public that means we're doing service for the public we're doing service for your um for your for your crowd so you're good when you put your crowd first that means you as a dj or yeah being a being a dj is is, is just you know it's all about your crowd so yeah, big shout out to all the DJs. But also, I have to introduce my crew because I'm with a beautiful crew. After a couple of years, I'm, I'm getting a crew back together. You know, Boogie Down Berlin was pretty much the first crew, the first crew of a DJ and the, and the crew on the Nightliner. We was doing that in 2002, 2003. Pretty much the first crew in Germany surrounding the DJ on the Nightliner. We was like, eight people, 10 people on a nice nightliner. And you know, um, and now I'm getting back my crew together. So I have a beautiful crew that I gotta introduce you guys. And um, I'm gonna start off with my man Pedro Santores on the wheels. Yeah, that's what's up, that's my man. El Torreso. El Torreso with the big cojones. My man got the big cojones, man. This is a very, very, Anaconda, Anaconda. Yeah, yeah, man, like they say, this guy is a motherfucking Anaconda. He got the powers, he's a you know, beautiful personality, beautiful person, we on the road, you know. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, it's just a pleasure hanging around that guy, that fellow, very inspirational fellow, um, very, very talented video artist actually also been doing a lot of great stuff in the past like from 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 from, from uh, uh, artists from Iceland like one of my favorite artists is Gus Gus and 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 he's been working with them doing some video stuff and also with Björk and them like beautiful artists and now Germany is very proud to have Pedro Santores and actually I am very proud to have Pedro Santores on my team on my crew doing our thing for you because what is up is the boogie down berlon we got it going on and pedro santores with the big cojones has got the bonus and the bononas you know what i'm saying so you watch out for pedro santores al mino el caro sempiro la conda pedro santores simon and also, I got to introduce you, my man, he in the back. His name is Shemi. Hey, everybody. Boogie Down Berlin is in the house. Ooh, ooh, ah. Yeah, man. MC Shemi is a very influential Berlin artist who's been on the, on, the, on the road also for a good while, like 10 years, 15 years in the business, has been representing for like DJs. He's, he's been working with a, with another fellow DJ OGB. They've been on the tour for like 10 years. So this is a very, um, very, you know, very, in, yeah, very, very, he knows what to do. Shemi knows how to MC, how to DJ, how to secure the club. Like this is like an all rounder. So this is like a whole crew in one person. This is unbelievable. This guy spins really good. He would probably knock you know half of the DJs that I know like knock them out right right off the box also he MCs he rhymes he sings and he's a very very cool person very great person so also you know shout out to my, to OGB you know for taking him on tour introducing him also you have to know that Chevy was a part of Chattanooga and they had like a hit record um, I don't know mid 20 2005 or something like that 3004, 3003, after uh, 2007. Alright, so they had this hit record in 3007, and if you don't know, you better go to heaven, because yeah. Boogie Down Berlin, and we got it all along. Actually, yeah, what we do in most of the time, we're going on stage, it's two of us, it's Shemi and me. His name is MC Shemi, but he's also a beautiful DJ, a great DJ. 
he knows how to rock the mic, he knows how to rock the wheels. He's nice on the wheels too, like he does backspin sometimes and he does some scratching and some hosting. So this is like a multi-talent. So this would be pretty much the first, um, the first, you know, of the people to work with that is really a multi-talent and, and does it all. Spins, rhymes, sings. Incredible. We're looking forward to, you know, to get some, some hit records because I want, I want, you know, this guy to be out there and, and do his thing. So what we're working on right now, we're on tour and actually we also working together on put some records. Shami has been a part of the, of the, um, of this, of this, uh, of this thing we was doing in the summer, like last summer or two summers ago, we had this little music camp where I invited artists from all over Europe to my home. A lot of influential artists was there, like Pana, Patrick Miller was there. Patrick Miller is a is a quite um, known artist right now. He's doing his thing, and 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 enough respect, Patrick Miller. I remember, you know, when he came to to the place, did his first recordings at Boogie Down Berlin with my man Maciek. You know, we we said him like, yeah, dude, you're nice, but what you need to do is what you want to do. You got to record. So this is when Patrick made his first recording session, and then also there's this girl from Austria that I've known for quite a while. So all those people were part of this of this music camp that we was doing in 2007 in my house. Um, we recorded a lot of great stuff also. It was a great time, huh? And we had a great time. The two clans was there. I got a, you know... Big up the two clan. I got a big up the two clan family right around massive, now. Massive breaks, my this, brother. This is like pretty much the strongest, you know, soldiers in Germany, like when it comes to music, like this is real musical soldiers, worldwide known musical family, two clan. You better um, peep out two clan. They have been doing great stuff lately with Sean Paul, with Cecile. I love Two Clans, Artist, artistical thing, like they really, really having a very positive message. They have been doing a lot for, um, for, for, the, um, for the collaboration of German people and African people. And Ham Two Clans is a very, very known group and also in North Rhine-Westfalen, very respected group, also worldwide. You can go to Jamaica, go to Beanie Man's house and, you know, and ask for Two Clans. And he'll be like, yeah, that's my man. You know, so Two Clan is, is, is internationally known and very respected group. Hey, we have known each other for a long time and I really, really hope that I can, you know, get my shit back together so I will be on the tour bus on the Nightliner because Two Clan was pretty much, that would be the first group I would take on tour with me. If you ask me, like besides the crew that I have here with me right now, with my man Santores and my man MC Shemi. Bah! And yeah, watch out, um, we coming to a hood near you. We going worldwide, you know, we go in places. Right now we go in most of the time, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, on this, on this car, on this BMW, on this nice BMW. Um, and uh, we looking forward to, to go other places and to stack the crew up. And also um, looking forward, you know, to take my man Kurt Blow on on tour with us also because you have to remember that Curtis Blow was the guy who introduced DJ Tomic to the music business. Here's what's happened. Yeah, big up, big up. Big like up. one of the strongest people, one of the strongest angels I saw around. Here's what's happened. When I was 15 years old, 16 years old, I was at the radio station. I was at the radio station. Um, doing my thing, working at KISS FM. It was like beginning of the 90s and 91, 92, something like that. And we had a lot of guests in the radio station. Public Enemy was there, we got Chuck D, Flav. And also Curtis Blow came down and he came down with, with Silkski, with my man Silkski, big up Silkski. And you know, with some people from the West Coast and they came to Berlin. And they was looking for a DJ because Six he just like couldn't do it. He had some problems with his hand or whatever, so he couldn't DJ that night. So actually, they came to the radio station like, "Yo, we're looking for a DJ. Is there somebody here who can DJ for us?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. You know, I'm the boy that cooks the coffee or whatever, but I'm also a DJ, so I can DJ for you." And they let get, you know, they um, they let me go on the wheels, and 
and I was, you know, cutting it up and doing an interview. So Curtis, you know, was inspired and he was like, yo, you want a DJ for my show tonight? I was like, of course, man, this was be like the best thing I can like do in my life. So the same night, I went out and DJed for Curtis Blow, was there with the, with the, with the whole, PE was there also, it was Berlin 92, I think. And, and Curtis liked it, so he asked me to join him on, on, on tour in the States, actually. And so I went over to LA, to Vegas. He had me DJing there. Um, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, I got crazy, crazy places. Because, I mean, I, I got like crazy places and, 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 um, and um, was DJing some great spots. I remember actually like, I remember DJing in a strip joint and Tony Braxton was there and she was looking so fucking amazing. You wouldn't believe it. I remember as when first I fly with this plane over LA and I had a walk, a little walkman with a little radio and, and I was so excited like about the first song that I'm gonna hear on American radio or whatever. And it was Tony Braxton Breed Again, and I loved it. Two days later, I'm DJing at a strip club and she is there celebrating. It was, it was crazy. I was like 17 years old by the time, 17, 18, so a lot of times I couldn't get in a club. I remember when we was on tour on the West Coast, there's, there's bouncers in a the club that would ask me for my age and for my ID. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I show my ID and they say, yeah, you're 18, so you cannot go in a club. I'm like, okay, but I'm the DJ. And they were like, yeah, but we don't give a fuck. You can't still not get in the club because we're gonna lose our license. So I had to sneak in the back door a lot of times and, and you know, somehow always made it, made it though. I remember this one beautiful night, Florentine's Garden reopening party where we had the far side waiting outside. They couldn't get in, so I sneak, sneaked in um, with the far side from the back door and was spinning op reopening of Florentine's Garden with my man Cool J. Man, first time I saw Cool J, I was like, woo, this boy is big, cause he's like, I don't know, like like two heads taller than me or something, big muscle guy. Big up to the Mr. Six Pack. Mr. Six Pack, yeah man, the original Mr. Six Pack. Um, yeah, but whatever, I mean, Kurt took me on tour, he had me spinning for him in LA. I appreciate taking me places, having me spinning with a lot of great DJs and great personalities. I remember it was not too many white people in the rap game. I was like, pretty, uh, pretty few of them. Um, so I remember DJ, uh, DJ Aladdin was, was I think pretty much the, the, the only mixed dude, but I didn't see no white DJ, so I was pretty much of an excitement because I was white DJ for all the black dudes, <laughs> whatever. But I had, I was crazy, I had, I had fun and, and also I appreciate what Curtis Blow is doing, he's always coming up with like some new shit, like come on, who would take a white dude to DJ for him? I asked him that a couple of times, he was like, yeah, I did it because you're good, not because of your skin color, I did it because he was good. And I appreciate that because Curtis Blow shows me how open-minded hip-hop is. And for me, this is the essence of hip-hop, being open-minded and, you know, being open, being open to what's going on around you. Just, you know, hip-hop is defined, you know, by more by skills than by your skin color or where you come from or how much money you have or whatever. So I really appreciate Curtis Blow taking this broke as white boy from the Kinderheim in Germany to the to Vegas to DJ for him and also I can't forget the first annual rap music award when Kurt had me on stage and I was there spinning with Kid Capri spinning with DJ Aladdin um, my heroes my old school heroes actually Kid Capri would be my old school my DJ hero is Kid Capri definitely and also as far as technical stuff, there would be DJ Aladdin, there would be of course Jazzy Jeff. Also Philly, Philly got a big impact on DJ. You can't forget Jazzy Jeff who was like, you know, or Cash Money. You cannot forget Cash Money who was, you know, first one to da 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 ah 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 Flash Gordon scratch. Man, this shit was incredible. But anyway, Kurt had me on stage spinning 
and the crowd show a lot of respect, a very positive response. So they nominated me for the for this first Anywhere Rap Music Award, and this was like, I was so excited. I was peeing my pants, and I was with this guy from Germany. Yo, you gotta peep this out. I was with this guy from Germany. His name is Andre Langfeld. Yeah. 1993, 90, this Andre Langfeld, he, he worked at the radio. He's still a radio personality. And I had my DJ routine together. I had like, you know, because back in the days, DJs had DJ routines. Like you would have a, like records, like a routine where you go back and forth and do your backset. So I had, I had a nice DJ routine together and had a stack of records like this. So my man Andre, to, was his job was to stand on stage and to give me pass me my shit and he flipped my stack of records so I had to do my routine backwards this was like ah oh man this shit was hard I mean I remember spinning my routine backwards and I I think it was it was not my best night you know but the crowd still showed a lot of respect and 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 I remember source magazine was there I was very excited to be interviewed by the source magazine who was like by the time the most official hip-hop newspaper I don't even have no idea if they exist because a lot of the hip-hop magazines they be coming and going but I guess uh, source magazine is still around and yeah man it was beautiful i remember snoop dogg uh coming to the place with his with his nice as stretch limo you know it was the time when he has his big record out he was a superstar by the time already dre was a superstar of course i think they just did i don't i don't even know if, if dre did solo by the time um i don't even remember if that was still his nwa time or if he or if he was a solo artist by then but it was very, very exciting, and 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 bottom line is, I uh, respect and appreciate open hip hop's founders' open mindedness, taking the white boy on tour and and introducing him, you know, to the big stages of the world. And man, gotta gotta big up my man Kurt Blow, cause he be he the man, he the man. He is actually the first rapper to get a major deal. There was the first rapper to get a major recording contract there was a first rapper to get a golden plaque the first official golden rap plaque on the record and also was the second golden 12 inch ever i think one one lady before a disco disco lady i think i don't even know who but i know that, that this is the second official golden plaque ever and it's the first official rap record that went gold so yeah man i guess curtis blow was always like that you know doing new shit he was the first rap millionaire he was the first the first dude who would um who would um who the first rapper who would who would act in a commercial in a sprite commercial yeah i mean it's just incredible it's just incredible and and i gotta big up kurt blow definitely for you know some people are just like that they like just doing new stuff and nobody can understand until they are part of history. So right now, when you when you look when you would look up Kurt Blow on Wikipedia, Wikipedia says like, yeah, one of the first founders of rap, and that has a reason, and that is just beautiful. But yeah, I will keep you posted on the history because I'm just about to bounce. We go to the states, hang out with my man Kurt Blow. I'm so much looking forward to that you guys can't imagine in the states we're doing a great thing doing this um new musical showcases supporting a lot of upcoming artists doing shows man we just had a show in baltimore 300,000 people like a great great show and also having this showcases in in in, in virginia they were beautiful with this talented artist and 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 right now we're going in a couple of more places we're going to philly we go into um DC, we go into Atlanta. I'm I'm looking forward to, to, to go to Atlanta. I'm gonna peep out Ooh, my people in the studio. Atlanta, I'm coming. <laughs> Big up to my peepers from the ATL, because the ADL is where it goes down. I'm definitely looking forward to hang out in the ATL. And yeah, also I'm very excited about the gospel showcases because we also gonna do some gospel showcases. So I'm um, keep you guys posted. We on tour. You're rocking with Boogie Down Berlin, and we got it going on from the break to dawn. So you stay up, you be good, you stay strong. No matter what 
who tells you you always when you believe in your dream follow your dream because your dream can be reality look at us boogie down berlin is back on the road again and we love you and we say thank you for your support peep us out all right one Ha, 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 ha.